Hey guys, uh, question for you. Um, of all the things that are out there, what sets you off? Um, for me, the things that set me off are things like this, not having enough time, or the process, uh, or really the prospect, I should say, of maybe not looking good or being capable at something. Those are the things that set me off. And, and, and once you get set off, at that point, what do you end up doing? Well, for me, I end up taking more time and I end up looking like an idiot, the exact things that I didn't want to have happen. Uh, it's opposite of what I wanted. I went through, actually, this exact experience yesterday morning, setting a ceramic counter top and, and tiling it, and, um, and, and I had to put in this aluminum edge trim, and it just didn't go well, and, and I went through this exact moment. And then I thought, man, I, I'm, I'm the one that's supposed to be helping people do better at things like this, and yet I, I'm just failing at, at being set off and angry over, over something fairly simple. But then I, I, I kind of was, was looking through this stuff and feeling like, man, I, sh I should be doing better at that. And then I, th then I looked at Nebuchadnezzar. I'm like, well, hey, at least I'm not as bad as old Nebuchadnezzar, right? <laughs> and we all know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego getting thrown into that fiery furnace. But what set King Nebuchadnezzar off to do that? Well, honestly, what it was is this terrible notion that he had that there were people out there who didn't think that he was the greatest thing in the world and therefore they would not worship him. And that's what set him off. But really there was a progression here that went through Nebuchadnezzar's world that he could have stopped if he would have taken the time to just pause and think about what was really setting him off. But sometimes, it's really hard to recognize what's setting us off. If you would have asked old Nebby <laughs> at the time what it was that was setting him off, he probably would have said, well, it's to the insubordination of those that are in my kingdom. They're not doing what I told them to do. But the real reason was that he wanted everyone to worship him. He wanted people to think that he was the the cat's meow of human beings, a borderline demigod. And when Rack, Shaq, and Benny didn't feel that way about him, that really poked at his buttons and he went haywire. Now that's what happens actually when we are set off or what we would call angry. Unchecked anger always leads to going haywire, or what we call rage. Daniel 3.12 picks up the story uh, when, when the uh, tattletales uh, tell the king about the Jews that they really hated, that they didn't fall prostrate before the 90-foot golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel 3 verse 12 says this, but there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, they say to, to King Nebuchadnezzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor the, worship the image of gold that you have set up. Well, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now then, when you hear the horn, the flute, and the zither, and the, the lyre, and the harp, and, and all the music, I want you to fall down and worship the image I made and do that. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God's going to be able to rescue you from my hand? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king. They said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God that we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Well, the Nebuchadnezzar at that moment was furious. You can see it leveled up with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them 
into the blazing furnace. You can see the progression of a man who went from uh, angry to just absolutely raging about this. And when we rage, we mm, quite simply just end up looking and behaving more foolishly. It's how it is. Uh, unchecked anger becomes uncontrolled anger, which becomes rage that makes us furious, and then we just do stupid things. <laughs> it's, it's part of that progression. And the only real cure is to catch it somewhere in there and, and think about and consider what's really making me mad. And then when you evaluate it and you think that through, it can really help. But that's not easy to do once you enter into rage. It's really hard when you're in, hard when you're in the rage to be able to just stop and think because that's when the rage takes over your mind and you end up becoming so unreasonable that you heat up the furnace seven times hotter. <laughs> like that helped to heat the furnace seven times hotter. At that point, really, the only damage we do is to those around. The time to make adjustments is early on. When something makes you angry, you gotta figure out what's really making you angry and what you're going to do about it before your blood starts to boil and your brain turns it to rage. Trust me, for the sake of those who have to go anywhere near you and your blazing fire, we would really appreciate it if you would cool down sometime before your rage makes you seven times hotter. Trust me, because I'm usually on the seven times hotter end of that. So what I want you to do once this week is this. Watch for a time when your anger is about to boil over and catch it. Just, just get it before it boils over. And then I want you to think about what's causing it and stop it from turning to rage. Just do that once. And you'll realize just absolutely how addicting that feeling is later on. It won't take long for you to realize this, that you like that feeling better long-term, way better than the short-term feeling you get when you let your anger rage up. I hope that helps. And we'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless.